this lesson we will use tables to analyze patterns. The repeated addition in the patterns will help us write rules for the patterns. Let's get started by examining this pattern of dots. We notice that every time, the next figure gets taller and longer by one dot. Let's count the total number of dots in each figure. These numbers form what is called a sequence. I put this sequence into a table so we can analyze the pattern it makes. We can summarize a pattern with rules. A recursive rule tells you how to go from one term to the next term. Let's find the recursive rule for this sequence. It's easy to see that we are just adding two each time. What number goes after nine? We can also work backwards to figure out the figure number. Now let's write expanded expressions for each figure so we can write the rule a different way. By writing ex the expressions this way, we can see the building blocks of a rule that will tell us how many dots any figure has, even the 30th figure, or the 100th figure. Without this rule we are going to figure out, we would need to make a really long table to figure out how many dots are in the 100th figure. The expanded expressions show that we are repeatedly doing the same thing over and over. There is a better way to repeatedly add the number two. We can rewrite the expanded expressions with multiplication. We start with one and add six twos, or one plus two times six. We start with one and add five twos, or one plus two times five. We start with one and add four twos, or one plus two times four, and so on. Looking at the new expressions, we see that some things are staying the same and some things are changing. The starting number is always one we are always multiplying 2 by some number. What does the 1 represent? The 1 represents the starting number, because we started with 1. What does the 2 represent? We are always adding 2's. What does the number that's changing represent? Well, it tells us how many twos we're adding. But wait, it tells us something else. What does the number that's changing match? The number that is changing matches the figure number. This fact turns out to be pretty handy. We can take any figure number, let's choose 50, and use the figure number to get the number of dots. Start with 1, 
add two times the figure number of 50, because we're adding 52s. Using the order of operations, we get 101. So the 50th figure has 101 dots. Or how about this? Let's say we don't know the figure number, and we'll just use a variable like n for the figure number. We still start with 1, but this time we don't know how many 2's we're adding. Well, we kind of do. We're going to add n 2's, because the figure number tells us how many 2's to add. So when we add n 2's, that's just 2 times n. We can plug any figure number in for n and get the number of dots. So the dots always equal 1 plus 2n, where n is the figure number. Here's the toothpick problem. We see that we start with two toothpicks. and add three more toothpicks each time. The rule for the number of toothpicks must start with two. Then we need to add a bunch of threes. The number of threes we're adding matches the figure number. So we add three times the figure number. Two plus three times the figure number tells us the number of toothpicks. Our rule started with the starting value, which we call the initial value. Then we multiplied the figure number by the recursive pattern or the rate of change. 3 is called the rate of change because the number of toothpicks changes by 3 every time. In this lesson, we use tables to represent patterns to help us write rules for the patterns.